Hello and welcome to this Specsizer help video highlighting the differences when sizing natural gas and diesel gen sets. I'll begin by talking about the physical differences between the two. In general, when we compare natural gas and diesel gen sets, power density, transient performance, and emissions come to mind. Natural gas gen sets usually have lower ratings than comparably sized diesels because they are thermal limited not structurally limited like diesels. Between the two, diesel gensets have better transient performance because they have a shorter mechanical path to deliver fuel for combustion. In the past, most natural gas gensets were designed to meet the market need of running continuously for optimal fuel efficiency in base loading or cogeneration applications. However, recently Caterpillar has developed their fast response gensets for the standby market that has closed the gap in transient response. These units can meet NFPA 110 Type 10 for starting, has an ISO 8528G2 response for load acceptance, and can take a 100% load block. Natural gas is widely considered the cleanest burning of fossil fuels as it has a more complete combustion, thus emitting less harmful greenhouse gases such as NOx and CO2 compared to diesels. There are pros and cons to both diesel and natural gas gensets and each have their place in the power generation industry. Now I'll start highlighting some of the unique characteristics of sizing between the two fuel types. Many of the differences can be found on the design, defined site conditions screen in the engine and advanced sizing parameter sections. Let's start with the genset duty. If I click on the question mark icon to the right of the drop down box, it provides helpful descriptions for each genset duty. All five genset duties are available for the diesel gensets. For natural gas, however, since they aren't designed to have any overload capability, only the standby and continuous duties are offered. The next parameter we'll look at is fuel type, which is straightforward with this, with only selections being diesel and natural gas. When natural gas is selected, the following parameters will appear. Fuel subtype, methane number, NOx level, cooling system type, and business strategy. With the fuel subtype, the user has the option to select the default pipeline natural gas or select the custom gaseous fuel to allow for a site-specific fuel, which can be entered in by selecting the calculator icon to launch our methane number calculator. The methane number is viewed as the fuel's ability to resist detonation, which is an uncontrolled second burning of the gas in the engine. In general, the lower the fuel's methane number is, the more timing adjustment and power derate will be needed to avoid detonation all the way down to a point where no rating will be available. For example, I'll enter in a custom site-specific fuel. Have 80% methane, 5% ethane, 7.5% propane, 2.5% isobutane, 4% nitrogen, and 1% CO2. When I hit the calculate button, 
you'll see the Caterpillar methane number is 63.3. Then I'll hit the submit button for spec sizer to use the fuel on our sizing. If I go directly to the gen, gen, select gen set tab, you'll see which units will operate at a D rate and which ones won't be able to run on this fuel. Indicated in the site power column. The site power column compared to the factory power, you will see the D rate versus no power available. If I go directly, if I go back to the defined site conditions screen, the next parameter we'll talk about is the emission certifications. For diesel units, there are a couple US EPA certifications available, the standby emergency and the tier four only, as well as emissions for the EU and China. If we look at natural gas, there is the US EPA NSPA emissions certification available which is currently only corresponding to our fast response gen sets these gen sets are certified from the factory factory to meet the specific emissions requirements without any on-site testing the next natural gas parameter we'll look at is the nox level this pertains to the nox emissions output of the gen set that the genset operates at. The user can filter by any or all NOx levels. Next, this brings us to the cooling system type parameter. With natural gas gensets being used in a wide array of applications from continuous to standby, the gensets are offered in different cooling systems configurations. This parameter was the, developed to provide the user with an apples to apples comparison between the two. If the radiator or heat rejection option is selected, spec sizer will size from two natural gas genset configurations. The first are units with radiators installed from the factory. The second is a combination of taking units with engine driven cooling pumps without radiators and adding a power loss to account for a radi radiator to be installed on site. This provides the apples to apples comparison previously mentioned. If heat exchanger or heat recovery option is selected, spec sizer will size from units offered only without radiators. To show how this function works, we'll set our genset duty to standby, and use our default pipeline natural gas fuel running at ISO conditions, then go directly to our select gensets tab. As we scroll up, we can see ratings marked with asterisks. These are units that have had an added power loss to account for an on-site radiator, which we can see when we compare the factory to site power ratings. And if we move the cursor to one of these configurations, you can see a red note stating that power loss.
the last natural gas specific parameter is the business strategy. This function allows the user to size based off the lowest operational cost, which is the default strategy for continuous applications, or lowest purchase cost, which is the default for standby. If we go back to our example, we can see that the lowest purchase cost radio button was selected, which is highlighted, which highlights the best fit option. Then we can select the lowest operational cost radio button, and it will change the best selected option. Now, if we look at a couple advanced sizing parameters, for our sizing methodology, I switch to diesel. The conventional method for diesel and island mode method for natural gas are one and the same. They just have different terminologies to aid their specific markets. This sizing method permits the user to select a range of allowable voltage and frequency dips, typically between 5 to 35 percent. The frequency limited sizing method is specific to the diesel gem sets, and it sets a project-wide allowable frequency dip requirement to 10 percent. This, me this sizing method will most always oversize a the gem set. The second option for natural gas is the parallel to grid sizing method, and it allows the user to input a power node that spec sizer will size in a combination in combination with the business strategy. Example, I'll type in two megawatts. Spec sizer will select the lowest cost two megawatt cast gen set. For voltage regulators, diesel has a couple different volts per hertz slopes available, while natural gas just has a standard available. For diesel gensets, the default selection for spec sizer to determine which slope is best fit. However, the user can select from either a standard 2 to 1 or 1 to 1 volts per hertz slope or a more aggressive optional 3 to 1 volts per slope, which could size a smaller, less costly genset. With that, those are the main differences when sizing diesel or natural gas gensets. These functions, the functions on the add load, select gensets, and data and report screens are the same between the two. Thank you.